Hi everyone, I'm Lisa Gillespie, cranial sacral therapist and restorative exercise specialist. Today we're talking about knees and in particular we're talking about kneecaps. And the one thing that you want to make sure your kneecaps can do in order to decrease knee pain and prevent knee problems occurring down the road. So we're going to look at what you can do to decrease wear and tear on your knees. So first thing I want you to do is to stand up if you're not already and with your legs fully straight, your knees all the way straight, I want you to see, can you lift and lower your kneecaps? You have to make sure your knees are straight or you won't be able to do this. So can you lift and lower your kneecaps? If you can't lift them, then they're already lifted and your job would be to see, can you relax your quadriceps, the muscles on the front of your thigh, enough to be able to allow your kneecap to drop down? which is ideally how we want it when we are going through our day as much as possible. So what's the big deal with whether or not you can lift or lower your kneecap? I'm gonna show you. So we have a stand-in for a kneecap and this TheraBand is gonna represent the muscles that run down the front of your thigh or your quadriceps. Quads means four. So you have four muscles on the front of your thigh that come down to the kneecap. They all join together at what's called the patellar tendon. Patella is the other word for kneecap or the anatomical term for kneecap. So all four of your quad muscles come together at the patellar tendon. They then cross over the kneecap and become the patellar ligament, which then anchors on the front of your shin or the front of your fibula or sorry, tibia. So the quadricep muscle is represented between my hands here. Then we have the kneecap and then we have the anchor point on the tibia down here where my other fingers are. All right. So looking at it from the side, I want you to see, you'll notice, you know, the kneecap protrudes a little bit, but what happens when we tense the muscles, the quads, we get not only a lifting of the kneecap, but we get a drawing back of the kneecap. So we have relaxed quads and the kneecap is down and protruding in front of the quad muscles. When we tighten those muscles, we not only have a lifting of the kneecap, but we have a drawing back. Now, what's behind the kneecap? your knee joint. And the back of the kneecap is not what we typically think of as a flat surface. It has a little bit of a, a point on the back of it. It's kind of a, a diamond shaped, so to speak. So there's a little bit of a protrusion on the back of that kneecap. So when the kneecap is drawn up and back, that protrusion starts to create friction. Go ahead, take your hands, rub them together. And what do you notice? You get heat. If you kept rubbing, you would start to wear away the skin on your hands. And that's what happens when you've got a kneecap that is compressed back into the knee joint because the quads are constantly on and tight. Then we get this ongoing friction that wears away the knee joint and specifically the cartilage of the knee joint faster than the body is able to repair it. We want to minimize this. We want to decrease this as much as possible to be able to preserve your joints for as long as you need them. I mean, it's great that we have the option of getting knee replaced, but I personally believe our original parts are ideal if we can keep them. All right, so what can you do about this? If you notice that you cannot lift and lower your kneecaps, that means you have excessive tension in your quad muscles, which is really, um, the inability uh, or the lack of communication, shall we say, between your brain and that part of your body. Now that's a pretty significant part of your body that our brain should ideally be communicating with. And if it's not, then let's get that back on track. Two things that you can do. The first is you can do a forward bend. So the easiest, one of the easiest ways to help get the quads relaxed enough that you can drop the kneecaps in the first place is to bend forward and you can use a chair if that's easier or a table or you can just simply support yourself on your legs and you want to bend forward from the hips you want to have your weight backed up so that you are 
behind your heels so that your hips and your pelvis are behind the heels. And then a lot of times this position is enough to create relaxation in the quads. You can um, give yourself a little bit of a tactile cue by jostling the muscle, doing a little bit of massage right above the kneecap can sometimes help the brain make that connection. And then just play with, can you lift and lower? And you may notice that one side is easier to catch on than the other or catches on more quickly. And that's fine. You're just practicing restoring that connection. And then gradually you can stand up until you are fully upright and able to still do that lifting and lowering. Another option is to back yourself up against the wall. Bring your feet probably at least two feet in front of you and have your hips up against the wall so you're nice and supported. And then you're just lifting and lowering. This helps to take the weight out of the equation so that you've got gravity helping to draw the kneecaps down in a place where the quads are able to be relaxed. So when we back our weight up behind the heels, we're less likely to be using these muscles on the front of the thigh to support us when we stand up, which is the habit that we have gotten into that is causing the problem in the first place. So practice this and then gradually walk your feet back until you are able to stand upright and fully lift and lower. So there you have it. Two ways that you can start practicing learning to relax your quads so that your kneecaps can drop down and you can prevent increased wear and tear on your knee joints and you can increase the longevity of your knees. Enjoy and I look forward to hearing about how it goes for you.